welcome to the KOTOR Iceberg. KOTOR is Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, a series of Xbox games that I am a huge fan of. And today I'll be covering the Iceberg. I did find the Iceberg on the KOTOR Reddit, posted by a user named Meatbag113847. I will be leaving a link to the original Iceberg there. A lot of information was explained by Meatbag on the Reddit, and I do not claim any ownership over the Iceberg image. It is completely created by them, and I want to thank them for posting it, and I think it's a really cool Iceberg. So, without further ado, I will be going over the theories on the KOTOR Iceberg. This refers to the character preset which the community has dubbed Mullet Man and is very popular and a lot of people use it and he's kind of become a meme at this point. There's not really much more information on this, it's just a cool little preset in the game. The true identity of Revan in Knights of the Old Republic is your player character in the first game. There's not really much more to this one either, you are Revan in KOTOR 1. This one could really be a video in itself. There are a lot of references to the movies in both KOTOR games. Several characters say the line, I have a bad feeling about this, and some maybe more obscure lines and references are said as well. I couldn't list them all. One notable one is when you buy a droid on Terrace, he immediately explodes, just like the one that Luke buys in A New Hope. Kreia also makes an allusion towards Jango Fett in a line of dialogue near the end of KOTOR 2. This one is a popular mod for KOTOR 2, which restores a lot of cut content from the second game. There are some other ones that do the same, but this is the biggest one that was made. The canonical name for the exile in KOTOR 2 is Mitra Sirik. I don't know if I pronounced that right but that is the canonical name in Legends for the Exile. The Jedi Codes are mentioned throughout Legends and referenced in The Phantom Menace. George Lucas did base the philosophies of the Jedi on Buddhist philosophies. The Sith Codes are these but reversed, but we'll be able to come back to this one later in the Iceberg. Mandalore's true identity in KOTOR 2 is Kandorus Ordo, he is a companion from the first game and later became Mandalore. This is kind of a silly one. There's an exploit in the second KOTOR where while using the spacesuit on the outside of the Paragus mining facility, you can use force speed before exiting and you'll be faster during that little segment of the game. It's kind of a little exploit, but it's pretty easy to do and it's kind of funny. I believe this is referring to the method in which you can retrieve Darth Revan's armor in KOTOR 1 near the end of the game. Otherwise, it could be referring to the general design of his armor and how Kylo Ren's armor may have been based on Darth Revan's. But if it is the retrieval method, there are several videos on YouTube going over how to retrieve the armor, and it's really cool. Both KOTOR games contain differences between playing as a male and a female. There are some minor differences in KOTOR 1, mostly being dialogue and romance options, but really there isn't that much different between the two playthroughs of the first game. Aperon was a fan-made remake of KOTOR 1 that was unfortunately shut down by Lucasfilm. It was going to completely rebuild KOTOR 1 from the ground up for modern audiences. And it's really honestly just a shame that that happened. They had a lot of screenshots that they showed off and it looked really cool, but they unfortunately had to delete everything for the project. And it's really sad to see a, an amazing project like that disappear, and I really hate that it got shut down and I really wish Lucasfilm would let someone attempt this again because I would love to see a remake. KOTOR 3 is the cancelled sequel to the KOTOR series and it was in a draft stage I believe and was quickly cancelled by Bioware while the company was in a rough patch. And I've heard some rumors that Mass Effect is what became of KOTOR 3, but I highly doubt that is the truth. This is most likely referring to a story that Kanders tells in the first game, where he shot a frozen asteroid that flew off into the galaxy, and the widely accepted answer is that it's Yuzhen Vong. 
I don't really know much about this one myself, but it seems to be a really interesting side story that is told in the games. This is referring to the canon exile in KOTOR 2, who is a woman named Mitra Surik. The canon head preset is not in the game, but it has been modded in so you can do a run as the canon exile. This is a quest line in the first KOTOR for a bounty hunter guild of the same name. There's not really much more than that from what I can find. There's some deeper storyline to the bounty hunter guild, but it's not too strange. But if I'm wrong, please correct me in the comments. While KOTOR 1 had some very minor differences. KOTOR 2 has far more extreme changes between male and female playthroughs. You get a character as a party member named Disciple rather than the Handmaiden for playing as a female. There are mods that can change this, and there's a lot of dialogue differences along with all this. Although in canon, Mitra Surik is accompanied by the Handmaiden and not Disciple. This refers to an easter egg in KOTOR 1 where you can put in a button combination to have Darth Malak turn into a dancing Twi'lek rather than having a boss fight, which is quite hilarious to watch, and there are many YouTube videos that show this. These are a series of videos created by YouTube channel Papito Quinn. I apologize if I mispronounced that. This is an interesting series of videos that talk about Darth Prey and her lessons, and I'll be leaving a link to those videos and the channel in the description. This was a cut planet from the original KOTOR. There were some music files that allude to that planet being started in-game, and a mod team had started working on a restoration mod to bring back the planet, but it no longer exists. Only a few screenshots exist of this planet. It has been mentioned in Legends and some other video games, including the Old Republic MMO. Supposedly there are quite a few differences through KOTOR 2 on a third playthrough, but the only one I could find was some dialogue where Adam breaks the fourth wall and talks about being from a cancelled Jedi Academy game and that he was a late addition to KOTOR 2. But that's really all I can find on this one. If you know more, please let me know. This is a very complex one. There isn't really much to say without kind of going into a whole bunch of lore and theories. The ending to KOTOR 2 is open and a bit confusing. You don't really see what happens to you or the companions that you gained. And depending on whether you go dark or light, it's a completely different ending as well. Some theorize that the companions you gained went to go rebuild the Jedi Order, and if there's more information there, I'd really like to know, but really I would have to dig really deep and read some novels and stuff that may go over the stuff, but as far as we know, we don't really know what happens after the ending to a huge extent. This is kind of the same thing as the third playthrough differences. Atten was supposedly supposed to be a character in a cancelled Jedi Academy game and was added to KOTOR 2 at last minute and this is from a secret dialogue that happens on the third playthrough of KOTOR 2. I'm Atten. I actually wasn't supposed to make it into the final game, but I was created at the last minute. Blame my agent. I was actually slated for a spin-off to Jedi Knight, but I don't want to talk about what well, happened. Well, I found no videos of this happening. There is apparently a glitch where Zalbar can get cloned over T3M4. This sounds really funny, and apparently he can, like, duplicate as well. This may be a meme, I'm not sure. I could find no proof of this other than some forums talking about it, but it sounds pretty funny. I believe this is referring to the ending of KOTOR 2, and there isn't really much else to add to it. I believe that the companions just kind of got onto the Ebon Hawk and left. I'm not really sure if there's more to it than that. I don't remember much of anything being explained about it, but it could just be a plot hole where maybe I'm just forgetting some major information, but from what I can research and find, I don't really know what this entry really means other than how they escaped at the ending of the game. So if you know more about this and I may have missed something, please let me know in the comments. This is a bug in the first KOTOR game that only works on the Xbox version. Through a few steps I won't be going over, the droid will appear in the uh, cockpit of the Ebon Hawk and you'll be able to teleport to any planet in the game, including ships and end game locations, although if you pick the Starforge, Leviathan, or Endar Spire, the game will crash. 
If you pick Terrace, you'll be forever trapped because it will, the Ebonhawk will no longer be obtainable and you will be as if you just landed there at the beginning of the game. The droid will leave after exiting the Ebonhawk. This just means the uh, various um, restoration content mods that bring cut content to the first KOTOR. There's a list of them on Reddit, which I will be leaving in the description. But yeah, this one's just the list of those mods, and that's really it. This is just referring to the fact that Mission was going to be a male character originally, early in development, and there isn't much more to this one. I'm not really sure what's weird about this one. When it comes down to Kray and Mandalore, they may be a little confusing to find out how to influence, but for Kray, it's just using manipulation, and for Mandalore, it's praising war and combat. Other than that, I'm not really sure what this one could mean. I believe this one's just like the first one about movie references. There's a bunch of voice lines and parallel scenes that reference Star Wars movies, and other than that, I'm not sure what this one could mean. Maybe there's some references to other movies, but I couldn't really find anything on that one. There's a funny little easter egg in the first KOTOR, where you can play with the pitches of characters' voices, and it's it's pretty funny. Um, I won't be explaining it here, but I'll leave a link to a video that goes over that in the description. The lead designer for KOTOR 2, Chris Avalone, praised the mod team that created the restored content mod for KOTOR 2. One thing he said is that he had a lot of respect to the team for restoring the content and he was glad it could see the light of day and he said that there was a lot more they wanted to include in the title obviously in the restored content mod proved it i'll be leaving a link to that interview in the description for you guys to read for yourselves i find it very likely that a lot of the cut content we may not even know about some of it may have been cut really early in and some of it may have been cut near the end but i guarantee there's probably more cut content than what we have lists and that we know of I'll leave a link to the current list, but I guarantee there's probably more that was cut than what we really saw. Other than that, this entry may have some different ideas behind it, but really, there's probably more content that was cut that we don't know about. There are probably versions of the Darth Nihilus voice lines out there, but I wasn't able to find any of them. And he's a really cool character, and the way his voice kind of echoes and whispers, it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I couldn't find any videos or articles about the unedited voice lines but as a bonus fun fact i didn't see it on this iceberg was dark nihilus's mask is based on no face from spirited away i found that while i was researching i thought it was kind of cool this is a really weird one and it's technically true the sith codes are a reverse of the jedi codes and it is true that some of the philosophy of the sith is pulled from the book mentioned i will not be saying the name but yeah, that's a odd one, and it is technically true from what I could find online. This one is true. Um, Bastila was originally supposed to be a character called Vimish Sunrider, but some trademark issues prevented this. And while Vima does exist in Legends, she is no longer the same character as Bastila. So a lot happened between the two games. And I won't go into great detail. Revan, who is the main character of KOTOR 1, left the known galaxy. The Republic won the Jedi Civil War, but they were left weak. The Jedi and the Sith were both viewed as the same thing and both quietly disappeared. There's a lot to this, and I miss some stuff, but there are definitely some YouTubers that can go over the whole history between the two, and if there aren't, it's pretty interesting. You can find it online, and the game does a pretty decent job of explaining it by the time you get to the end of the game. There isn't much information I could find on this one other than a few forum posts asking about it. Apparently there is an ending cut from the first game that if you're a female and you romance Karth, he'll confront you and try to redeem you, which leads to a different ending rather than you just killing him. There may be more to this, I couldn't really find anything to be honest. If you know more about this then be sure to leave in the comments. This one's just a meme. The mullet man's kind of a, a meme in the whole community and yeah, no, this one's not to be taken too seriously at all. Same as the previous one, there's another preset that kind of looks like Jesus and KOTOR 2, but it's also just a meme, it's just meant to be a joke. The true ending for KOTOR 1 is the light side ending, and this can technically be voided in KOTOR 2 depending on how you explain the past to Atten, but yeah, the true ending is the light side ending. 
This is kind of a meme. The original poster of the iceberg mentions on Reddit that while on a stream, someone made a joke about Paragus being a litmus test to weed out people who thought it'd be too boring and to keep the more patient players. I do find it interesting though. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Not really to be taken seriously as far as I know though. I don't get this one, but the original poster also stated it was a joke on Reddit, and that's about as much as I can tell. It's regarding one of the restoration mods, but yeah, I don't really understand this one. This is about the philosophy of Kreia's teachings and how they can be applied in real life. I can't really explain it in this video, but again, Papito Quinn's videos can give you some insight, and there's another video that I'll leave in the description that is kind of a big overview of Kreia as a character and her teachings. Both are really interesting, but that's all I can really say on this one. This one's, I believe, is a joke. It's more like the Mario 64 copies being personalized and Halo 3 copies being personalized. It's a cool theory, but the best way that you could say they're personalized is how she responds based on your choices and dialogue, but in all reality, I do not believe that these are personalized at all. They're just set dialogue in the game. Well, that covers the KOTOR Iceberg. This was a lot of fun to make, and again, I want to thank the original poster for posting this on Reddit. I think it's a really cool iceberg, and I hope you guys enjoyed it too and learned something from this. I hope I can do more of these in the future. I think it'd be really cool. There's a couple of games I want to cover. A few of the ones I did want to cover were already covered, but there's a couple I want to cover, but they don't have icebergs that I could find, and I may pursue that in the future. But if you enjoyed videos like this, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I hope you come back to see more of this in the future. I do have gameplay videos, be sure to check those out if you like that kind of stuff, but if you want more of this content, just let me know and I'll see what I can do and try to expand and do more stuff like this.